Hi, Jeff Park here. I would like to go over uh, some various ways in which we can use the subdivision modifier with some specific type of uh, objects or meshes. And uh, to do that, I'm going to get started by deleting the cube here, delete the faces. And so we've basically got an empty object, so it's called cube still, but let's just call it shape. I'm not quite sure what shape it's going to be right now. Let's go to um, top mode and let's create a couple of vertices, select them both and press F. And then if I hold the control down and now click with the right mouse button, it allows me to create like a path, which is really nice. And going to create an S. Yes, an S. Okay, once that's done, let's actually let's make a few more changes. Let's select it all and let's move it up just a little bit on the Z axis and let's extrude it down a little bit. And there we have our shape. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to create a nice curved sided S but keep the tops flat. And there are there's some obvious ways of doing it, but hopefully today I can show you a few a few, few more which you may or may not know. And so to do that, it's going to uh, let's go back to object mode. I'm going to duplicate this S a few times just so I've got something to use. So let's put one there, and let's duplicate that one. Move that. I think three will be sufficient. Let's start with this one. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is apply the subdivision surface modifier and you can see what it does and you all know what it does it smooths off the all the surfaces all the faces it kind of subdivides them and uh, creates a nice smooth looking s uh, but it's not doing what i want it to do so the most obvious way or the simplest way that which we can achieve this is to use the edge loops and by Clicking on Ctrl and R allows us to add the edge loops and I'm going to slide them up as far as we can go in the corners here. I'm going to do the same on the tops. And seeing as the sides are still a bit curved, I'm going to do them on the sides as well. And now that does create a nice cur nice looking S. Uh, with sharp, nice sharp corners for us. And of course what's so nice about this subdivision is let's say you've done a, an, an object and you've created it and you've done it in faces and you've done you've worked really hard to create a hard surface model and then someone says oh now can you print me a 300 dpi I don't know 50 half a meter you know image of what you've just done and of course it's fine when you're looking at it from here but as you get, start to get closer uh, what happens is you start to see the vertices of the uh, polygons, you know, the straight lines. And of course, if you've got subdivision modifier on, you can just make it smooth as you like, uh, which is really, really nice if you're doing print work. So, uh, so for that reason, I've used that quite a few, quite a bit actually, uh, for doing some very high resolution models. So, <coughs> excuse me, that's one way of doing it, but is there another way? Uh, there is. There's a few other options. I'd like to cover those now. Uh, what we can do is we can use what is called the edge split. Now, let me explain what edge split is first. If I just select, let's select, what's going on? Oh, do you know, I wonder why that vertex was coming there. I've got to, I don't know how I managed to do that. Let's uh, select those edges and click Edge Split. What it does, if I hit G now, try that again, pretty sure it does. Edge Split, okay, has worked. Now, if I select that face, you will see it is no longer joined to the vertices. And that's what it does. And so if I now do that to that edge, we'll do it to this edge here, and we'll also do it to the sides of the S, edge split. Now they're all split. If I 
select the top there control and nail select the loop now you'll see that that whole top is now separate from the bottom as as is the sides and so on so now if i apply the subdivision surface modifier we're going to get almost let's just make that nice and smooth we're going to almost get it right but not quite the way the subdivision modifier works is it literally pulls in from the corners and so where, if the corners aren't joined in this particular instance they're not uh, basically you're going to get gaps there and so if we let's say if we go back to this model select it all and go let's just clean it up start again oh, whoops not that one what I meant to do was clean up remove doubles so we're back to where we started if uh, let's say I just do these ones here and maybe the tops like so and then do edge split now I've got something that's looking quite nice uh, it's just allowed me to work with the edge uh, with the subdivision modifier but the edges aren't pulling away anymore and once again I can take that up as high as I like and so I've created a different look to the ends here which is which is what you might like which is can be quite nice um, but I can't achieve that flat squared look if I was to by the way come back to this model and try and achieve this with this model I would have had to have remodeled it completely I would have had to have had added, added some geometry to the ends uh, in order to or beveled let's say for example these edges here in order to create that curved edge uh, so that's nice so I've got that uh, looking quite nice uh, let's move on to the next one because there is uh, an, another way of doing that in fact in fact there's another way of doing exactly the same thing which I'm going to show you before I move on to what I really want to show you I'll show you with this one here so let's select exactly the same as what we've just done on this one tops and now I'm going to apply the edge mark sharp sorry it's called mark sharp and what that does is if I now add the edge split modifier nothing changes until I add subdivision surface modifier and change it to let's, I'm just changing the order so that it comes last and change that to sharp oh no I beg your pardon I was right the first time so I've taken the edge angle off and just added sharp edges and basically it allows me the edge um, the modifier to just do exactly the same as I did on this model but with a modifier it doesn't actually detach manually it doesn't actually physically detach any faces like this one did uh, but it achieves exactly the same thing subsequently it is called the edge split modifier because it does the same as the edge split manual job uh, but it actually doesn't physically do it if that makes sense uh, so there I've achieved exactly the same thing lastly and this is really what I wanted to show you want to get to because this is I find uh, quite quite invaluable really and it's using the edge crease and the edge bevel weight to achieve some quite nice results without having to use the uh, edge loops etc so we're going to do the same again and we're going to start by selecting these edges and I'm going to go to edge crease now if I move my mouse you can see it's something's changing on the actual model but I'm just going to click once and you can see here that I can change the factor of my edge crease amount now I'm going to take it all the way up to one and then now add the subdivision surface modifier and you can see straight away what it's done I have just added the subdivision modifier as it was and it's created where I had the edges selected and create and, and added that edge bevel uh, sorry edge crease it's kept them nice and sharp it's lovely now what about the ends we can do the same with the ends we don't have to worry about them pulling away in fact just for this for this example I'm just going to add those two to start off with and go edge crease pop that all the way up to one and then you can see we've got a very very similar 
it's not identical in fact model to this one here and this one uh, without using the edge split modifier uh, but it's, that's not all it doesn't end there if we go back to edge mode if I wanted to create the sh nice sharp edges of course which I couldn't do on the other two uh, just by adding the edge crease option here I now have got a quite a nice option there now it, uh, it goes on if you can work with this in various different ways I'm going to select the whole loss and go edge um, edge crease I'm just going to take it down to minus one so there's nothing on it for a moment uh, what's nice about this is is if I want just the edge edges to be flat here I can just choose those edges edge crease and now I've got like a nice sharp edged tube tubular shape which is really useful and finally let's go on to the actual edge bevel if I now let's just remove the weights on those again going to oops, did I remove the whole lot I don't think I did edge bevel weight minus one Quite sure what's what I've got on here. Edge bevel weight. Uh, oh, edge crease, of course. Duh. Okay, it's late. There's no excuse, I know, but okay, let's start again. So let's grab that edge, that edge, that edge, and that edge, and this time let's do edge crease like we did before pop it up to one but this time we're going to add add edge bevel weight and pop that up to one as well now if we add the bevel modifier now I'm going to use it to show what happens because you can have it before or after I'm going to keep it afterwards but it make sure it's on weight see this bit better if I do that and now you can see that I've got a beveled edge here on the corner. It only allows me to bevel it so much if it comes after the subdivision modifier. But if I pop it before, you'll see the difference. So now I've got literally the, like a completely the bevel modifier on there. But what's so nice, of course, is that if you apply the bevel modifier without specifying to it if you like what you want beveled every every edge gets beveled so you'll have um, all of the let's go back to edit mode all of these particular edge loops here they all have an extra bevel on them and so uh, what's so nice about this is you can create a really nice look just by specifying which what which you want beveled now at the moment I've just got the edges beveled uh, so if we go back to edit mode let's choose these here and do edge bevel weight pop that back up to one and you can see how it's starting to look and of course what's nice about the bevel modifier is you can curve it if you want to and you can change the profile so you can come in that's a bit too much and so you've, you've got a lot more to work with with the two there so the bevel edges and the bevel weights edge crease and edge bevel weight working together you can create some really nice effects and so um, I recommend you just have a play around uh, that's basically what I'm doing now and uh, so uh, see what you can come up with uh, and uh, I'm sure you're going to tell me there's some other options there are really really good and I haven't even looked at half of these things that go on in here uh, but uh, I just love Blender at, at the moment I'm just enjoying learning it so hopefully uh, if you are learning it too then you can, you can get something out of that thanks for listening take care god bless bye bye